In this video, we're going to introduce shocks. So having accepted the idea that there can be a discontinuity in saturation, we haven't discounted the fact that mass has to be conserved. So we're going to look at conservation of mass to find the shock speed. So the situation we're going to look at is where we have a saturation here to the left, right, which we call S1 left, and then we have another saturation, a different saturation, to the right of the shock. And because we're just talking about something moving, all we need to know is the speed with which this shock moves that we'll call Vs. So we'll consider that we just look at a small time increment, a time delta t, and in that time delta t, the shock has moved, and how far has it moved? This distance will be V shock times delta t. Now we're going to invoke conservation of mass, so we're going to look at the mass that's essentially within this area here. But of course we have that's got to be equal to how much flows in and how much flows out. So what flows in is going to be Q1, that's the volume per unit area per unit time on the left. And we're going to write this in terms of the fractional flow because we've introduced this concept. It's F1 times the QT. Now what do we have on the right? Is another flux. That's the flux out. And that's going to be F1 on the right times the total velocity. And at this point, we have everything we need to derive the shock speed. So let's look at the change in mass. So imagine we have a box here, okay? What's been the change in mass as the shock has moved here? Well, it's just going to be the volume of the box, isn't it? Well, the length is V shock delta T. Most people sort of find doing things per unit area a little bit too abstract. So imagine there is an area out of the plane of the board, okay? Um, that area always cancels out, so don't overthink it, um, but it's a bit explicit. So that's now a volume. What's the change in mass in that volume, okay? Well, it's a porous medium, so the pore volume multiplied by phi, and then it's not fully saturated, it's only saturated with the saturation S. But just a moment, the saturation goes from the right-hand state, this lower number, to the left-hand state. So the change in saturation is the change here, okay? Left minus right. So we multiply it by not the saturation itself, but the change in saturation, okay? That's one left. And we can write this as delta S. It's the change in saturation. So just wait, let, let, let's, let's think about units here. This is a volume, this is dimensionless, so we've still got a volume. So if you want to be explicit in terms of kilograms, we multiply by density. But again, we're assuming density is constant. Okay, so that's going to cancel out as well. And that's got to be the mass in minus the mass out. Okay, so what's the mass in? Well, what goes in is F1 left. Qt. Now what else does it multiply? That's volume flowing per unit area per unit time. Multiply it by the area. So that's the volume per unit time. Multiply it by the time. That's a volume. But I want a mass, and so I'm going to multiply it by rho, and of course that's going to, that's going to cancel. But, you know, just, just so it's all very clear, right? Conservation of mass. Strictly speaking, it's also conservation of volume because... Um, volume and mass are just strictly related through a constant um, density. Right, so um, mass out, okay, is, is this, right, so. Okay, so a number of things here are all going to cancel, aren't they, right? The areas obviously cancel. It's always a dummy. In this particular case, because we're assuming this, this, this is going to cancel, and delta t is also a, a dummy, right? Um, so we seem to have everything we need here. This term 
all that we're left with, if we look at it carefully, is a QT times an F1 left minus F1 right. OK, and that is, um, we can write that as delta F, can't we? OK, just as we had delta S. And this is positive, right? Left minus right, as draw, right? So we end up, we've got Vs. Oh, this is looking quite simple, right? We've got Vs is Qt delta F over delta S. And we've got a porosity term. So that's the shot speed. So actually, what's nice about this derivation is, you know, before we thought we had a partial differential equation and we had all these different terms and we manipulated things and it seemed to take us forever. And we could have actually got to how fast the waterfront moves in a two liner. OK, so this is quite nice, quite simple. Uh, you might be wondering, well, this is a real speed, isn't it? This has got dimensions of metres per second. What's my dimensionless shock speed? The dimensional form, and if you can't see this immediately, you know, sort of go through the maths with the dimensionless numbers, but actually the dimensionless form should be obvious. It's just delta F over delta S. OK, the QT over phi is sort of in the, in the conversion to dimensionless units. So we have a shock that moves at a speed, which is the change in F divided by the change in S. OK, so we're really looking now for a solution for multiphase flow that can be one of three things. A shock. The second was what we call a constant state. And this was just S1 is a constant. Right? That actually is a totally legitimate solution. I know it's simple. And then the third one was what was derived in the previous video. And it comes with a rather strange, it's called a rarefaction, which is a smooth change in saturation, not a shock, not nothing happening. And there the dimensional is speed and don't worry whether or not D is a subscript or superscript. Um, that's uh, not of any particular consequence, is just the derivative. So you can see actually the shock and the rarefaction are similar. In fact, I can use this and I could even get the rarefaction straight away because I could say, well, this, we could have a, a discrete change in fractional flow and saturation, or we could take the limit that this is smooth and this just becomes a derivative. So in fact, my two liner allows us to do both of those solutions in one. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to show how taking these three things, we can construct a solution to what we call the Buckley-Leverett problem.